everybody. Welcome to NJPW Puro Wrestle Review. I am one of your co-hosts, two-thirds Andre C, and I've got right here next to me, but in another city, she is the wonderful, the epic, she is Princess Melball. How you doing, Melball? You're doing great, Andre. I had a great day at the gym. It's a weird day because it's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Tuesdays and I know we Tuesday and I don't get along very much, very often. We don't we as a day in person, we just we're not a vibe. Everyone, you know how everyone's like, I got a case of the Mondays. Nah, B. I got a case of the Tuesdays. But it was a great Tuesday. I had a great leg day. Jim was quiet. My tattoos all healed up. It's not peely and creepy and gross anymore. Got to watch some wrestling this afternoon. Got to talk wrestling with various people throughout the afternoon. It's been a good day. How are there you doing? Go. I'm doing actually my Tuesday because again, my Tuesday is everybody it, it, like my Tuesday is what most people consider a Monday because I go back to work on Tuesdays. I, I'm off on mm-hmm. Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays. So I feel you. Tuesdays are not. Me and Tuesdays don't usually agree, but this okay. Tuesday was really good. A great, I had a really good day at work. They're uh, they're giving me more and more to do at my job, so I'm like in in my new in my new role. They're giving me more and more like they're giving me more and more stuff to do, which I'm really enjoying because it's. I, I just feel like so I'm happy that I'm been happy with that. Um, I'm. This is my one day on before my next where I'm off tomorrow because I will be going to Bowling for Soup in the afternoon for a meet and greet with the wonderful, wonderful band Bowling for Soup, one of my favorite bands of all time. And I'll be getting to meet oh. them in the afternoon and I'm going to see them perform tomorrow night. So I'm super, super excited. So it's, it's a good, it's a, it's a really good Tuesday. I, I thought that was a comedy group or something. I didn't realize oh. it was a band. <laughs> oh wow! Oh yeah, no, it's a band. It's a band. They're 1985. I, I, as long as you're gonna have a good time, that's all that matters, right? Yes, yes. I'm super excited. I'm super duper yes. excited. So my Tuesday Excellent. was really good, and it's leading into a absolutely wonderful Wednesday. Yay! Hopefully, I'll have a line on our new car tomorrow too, because I'm gonna go look at more cars. Yay! Not that there's anything wrong with your current one. It just, just rattles really a lot because you have so many coin in the front dash. It's also old and needs a lot of work done to it under the hood, which you don't you ever notice. So, yeah. I noticed the check engine light, but I don't notice. No, I, I don't tend to go under your hood. No, that that's just due to I have a there's a, a, a slight gas leak in the gas cap and it's always on because it doesn't seal properly. So that, that check in line like, just doesn't go away because of that. <laughs> Tremendous. Yeah. Tremendous. <laughs> oh, the things we muse about when we're trying to kill time before we talk wrestling. Yes. <laughs> oh, have mercy. Oh mercy, mercy, mercy! But we are not here to talk about my car troubles and the and the check engine light that's permanently on in my car. We're here to talk some professional wrestling. We're going to talk NJPW, King of Pro Wrestling, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, a king was crowned tonight. But before we do mm-hmm. that, I want to thank each and every one of you. Whether you're you might be turn whether you're tuning in on YouTube. With it's on your mailbox talk talk, back for your video, or you're listening to us in audio form, we really do it over on A Plus Productions. We do appreciate everything you do to support us. So if you are listening over on A Plus Productions, uh, thank you so much. And if you do want to hear us in audio form, A Plus Productions.com, uh, you can grab the A Plus Sports feed the A plus uh, entertainment feed and the feed you can find us on a plus wrestling. So check us out over there and join the Facebook uh, group. So you can uh, just chat with people and get the, the great community going on over there. And then if you are watching on the YouTube, whether it's backbreaker video or Andre Melbourne talk, either one of these, please give the video a like, 
Subscribe to the channel if you can. We are slowly building. We, we appreciate all of you guys joining up and listening to us. Uh, don't forget to uh, uh, go into the comment section and uh, just leave your messages. We love chatting about all the great professional wrestling that we talk about. We love to chat about it even more with you guys. Uh, also, please share us out to your friends, family, and those who like strawberries. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Woop woo woo. I don't know what I can't remember what he says. <laughs> it's starting to make noises. In woo. In woo. In woo. Uh, oh, shout out to Kat who's been like sending me that message like the last daily. two weeks straight. Well, oh. I mean, we got the matching tattoo. There you go. There you go. You're bonded for life. Matching tattoos. We are. You're bonded are. with Kat, and Kat's also bonded with Deb. So, yeah, she's bonded twice. We are we are Charlie's angels, aren't we? We are Andre's angels. Yeah, we are Andre. Uh, no, you're Andreas's angels. I think we figured that out. That's right, 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 right. And I'm yes. and I'm Bosley. And I'm Bosley. Yes. I choose to be. Work. I, I choose to be the Bill Murray version because that's the coolest version of Bosley, in my opinion. Because Bill Murray. From the he certainly was the sassiest, wasn't he? Yeah, that's why I, I choose to be him because it's Bill Murray. <laughs> totally but fair. Enough on Bill Murray. Let's get in. Let's talk some NJPW King of Pro Wrestling. And I, we've got to talk about an entire card before I get to what I really want to talk about on this show. But we're going to kick it off in uh, some uh, Lucha Libre action. The Lucha. Yes. Lucha. <laughs> Lucha. We're going to talk Hiromu Takahashi versus Mystico. Um, Mystico was given a plaque for his 20 years by the president or the that's the president, one, one of the reps from the company uh, for 20 years in professional wrestling. He uh, was given that. Uh, and then Hiromu coming out with I think the next item I have to buy for Melba, the LIJ rice cooker. It's true. I don't have a rice cocker. Cocker? Cooker. <laughs> wow. Oh, that was that was rain, a, I guess. I guess. I that know. was a. <laughs> Jesus. Now, when I'm looking at this picture, that's for damn sure. Yeah, I don't <laughs> actually have a rice cooker. Um, I do it the, the traditional way with, like, yeah, water on a stovetop. So. Yeah. I don't I, mind I, that. I, yeah. I feel like you could just get away though with like getting regular regular rice cooker and just buying an LIJ decal. Yeah, I think that's what I'll have to do. <laughs> uh but Mr. he coming out and he opens it up and Mystico's mask. he's been steaming rice so long it became a mask and it is a Mystico mask. It became a Mystico. Yeah. Turned to a ma Mystico mask. So they the, <laughs> and then they show Toriano is on the Japanese commentary booth. Yeah. Um, yeah. So early on, we got a nice Topi series seat up by Mystico. And oh, just so everybody's aware, I watched this show live at two at two a.m. my time. I got up at two a.m. to watch this show live. I am committed <laughs> yeah. to this show. I'm well, I'm committed to one match on this show. <laughs> I was going to say, you probably could have slept through the entire show and just woke up for the one match and been happy. But well, I decided, yeah. But I decided to watch the whole thing, take notes, all that stuff, just get it done. Then I was done with it. It's fair. Yeah. It's fair. Um, no, that really nice Tope Suicide by Mystico off the top of this, early on in this match. Uh, Hiroma does start targeting the knee, working it over with uh, submission stretches, uh, dragon screws, all this stuff. Working his new like figure standing figure four thing that he has. Mm -hmm. uh, this new move. Um, Mystico fights back at one point, gets a rope walk, arm drag, and then a kick a kick from the apron and a springboard rana, sending Hiroma out to the floor and hits a beautiful looking tornillo uh, to Hiroma on the floor. Uh, they end up on the top rope at one point, and Mystico with the Spanish fly. Uh, yeah. And then, I, this is where I wrote a note, I hate the person with the air horn. <laughs> but, but to this point, and I didn't realize what this was, because after this match, it never returned. 
Uh, and what I realized is this, I was listening to John Pollock from post wrestling when he, his, his review of this show, and he was talking about, yeah, this is something they do in Mexico. They have air horns and stuff. So I'm figuring they did it for the match to keep that feel of the Lucha Libre. And I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense, but I still hated it. <laughs> I don't know if you remember back to the Fantastic Mania tour that they did earlier. It was the same thing. They always had the, the air horns throughout it and it only really happens during the lucha match um when i've watched a cmll and triple a in the past uh, same thing they they always have the the air horns to to kind of celebrate their lucha libres which is fun little tradition it's a nice little way to not lose your voice mm -hmm. it is also a really good way to make everyone within the like 10 foot radius deaf mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 dude, I really could have. I could have used the air horn on last Friday when we had our civics. By the end of the night, my voice was getting yeah. really sore. Yeah. I mean, they put on a great show. It was hard not to cheer. Yeah. Uh, so Miska mm -hmm. gets a Canadian destroyer, but then uh, he yeah. goes for La Mystica, but uh, Hiromu reverses into the Hiromu roll for two. Uh, La, Mi La Mystica is hit, but Hiromu immediately rolling out of the arm bar. Gets him up. Fireman's carry drop onto the knees. Reapplies his standing figure four and turns it over into a modified clover leaf. Yeah. And Mystico tops out. Yeah. So they are now one, one, and one in the lifetime matches. Yeah. Yes. Ain't mad about it. And then um, Hiroma, oh, so they say Hiroma post match was uh, kind of indicating that he wanted a hair versus mask match. It looks like Hiromu wants to get a haircut. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they also uh, mentioned like Hiromu was looking for stipulations going into this match, but were not able to get anything kind of put into place before him. But yeah, it is looking like, based on the exchange afterwards, that Mystico is willing to put up his mask and Hiromu is willing to put up his hair. Um, I feel by the mercy of everything holy, Hiromu would probably lose that match. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, for sure, for sure. Because Mystico terrifies me. Oh, um, but yeah, um, this was exactly what I expected it to be: high, high energy, fast paced. Um, just go, 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 go. Mystico is a very, very you know, flashy and very, very exciting lucha uh, superstar to come out of CMLL. His his style has always very much impressed me. Um, and to see it clash with Hiromu and see Hiromu have to pull out more submissions um, to kind of ground uh, Mystico was really, really cool because we got to see him kind of adapt to who he was wrestling. And Romo, also, you got to remember, his excursion from New Japan, he spent a lot of time in Mexico huh? working as uh, Kamatachi. Kamatachi. Uh, yeah, so he, he has extensive uh, training in, in, the, in the Lucha Libre world. So, yeah. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And I loved his mask. Very Starlight Kid almost reminiscent. So we move on to the second match on the show. It is for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. It is the Bullet Club War Dogs. Clark Connors and Joe Maloney defending against the Intergalactic Jet Setters, Kushida and Kevin Knight. Both teams, I was really impressed with this, wearing matching colors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Um. I felt that um, Connors and uh, Maloney's gear, did you get the same vibe just with the color scheme and everything? It gave me like Top Gun vibes. Yes. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. I really liked it. I, I did like how, uh, like how Kushida had the little jetpack. That was good. I liked that. I liked the jetpack. He's, the jetpack has returned. Oh, it was a nice little touch to come in. He's very much a... I, I still don't understand... Like, I understand the references, but I still don't fully understand the character. But 
God damn, is he a great wrestler? Take us into it, man. The, the, the jetpack doesn't really work to any of his references. His references are Back to the Future. They didn't have jetpacks in that. I can't I can't even like dispute that because I've never seen any of those movies. Oh, we have something to watch. Oh, right as soon as you watch Nightmare. Sure. Just set up the time. <laughs> <laughs> you set the date. Yeah. Uh night, man. It's all it's all in the shoes. It's all in the shoes. Man, those drop Telling kicks are you. just are crazy high, man. He wears oh. orange and black because he's Tigger. I've missed I've missed his drop kicks so much. You uh, see, there was oh yeah, take us into it because we're just gonna get sidetracked. Yeah, uh it's one of my notes in here is talking about oh. his drop kick. Um there's a great spot on the floor. Uh Drilla tossing Knight into the crowd. Uh Connors hits Kushida with a chair. Kushida drop holds Connor into that same chair once it was set up. Uh, as Knight takes out Drilla on the other side, and like Knight or Kushida puts Connors in the chair, and Drilla or, or not Drilla and uh, Con and Knight running hops up on just hops up on the apron, comes off with this huge double stomp onto Clark Connors in the chair, just crushing this chair. Super impressive spot. Yeah. yeah. The spears and the gores from Drilla and Connors in this match were all over this thing. And they were yeah. crazy. They were just throwing yes. them. Um, inter uh, there was a, uh, and I got to pull it up because they were actually, uh, there was Intergot Jetsers go for, and I got to, there's a mess up, but I got to give credit to Knight how he saved it. Uh, they went for this, mm -hmm. the Motor City's Machine Gun Skull and Bones, which is the neck breaker uh, splash combo. But Knight mm -hmm. slipped coming off the top and he lands. And then he just hops up into the air, into the cross body to like, yeah, he messed up, but he had the wherewithal to just jump a jump in instead of going back up. He just did one of his hops and came down. It was almost just as effective with the height that guy gets on his jumps. So I was, yeah, I was gonna say his athleticism, his natural athleticism just kind of saved him there. I almost didn't get that one out. <laughs> yeah, I, I really have to give it to him on though. Like that is ring awareness that he's picking up to not to just do the hop. Like you have the hops, like he he, that is he's very much learning, and he's he, like you can see that he he could just pivot on his feet for whatever he needed there, which is really impressive. 100%. Um, yeah. So uh, the beautiful electric chair drop kick combo by uh, the jet setters, the Connors, where he got they got up the Connors up like she's like, and Knight just hops up, no problem, just boots Connors in the chest. I was like, oh. yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it's just effortless for him. I'm telling you, he's Tigger. Yeah, uh, then the War Dogs take over. Uh, they're just like uh, Kushida knocks Knight off the apron. Connor hits the G flip to Kushida. The dogs hit uh, the hit and run on Knight on the apron, yeah. which looked brutal. Um, yeah. Kushida's fighting off Drilla. And he hits a Shote palm strike, but Maloney gets him up for a power bomb. And then hits a, a powerbomb neck break, a running powerbomb neck breaker combo by the dog. That both men hit gores. Then they set up hit and run by Kushida kicking out of that last possible second. So they're starting to go for set up for for the uh, for the full clip. Uh, but Jula ends up tossing Kushida into the ropes. Uh, or sorry, and then Knight gets a blind tag. And this is where they set up for the. Uh, uh, full clip, but Knight comes hopping over Drilla, punches Connors off the top, which was just impressive as hell. Uh, and then Kushida gets a backslide onto Drilla Maloney, and Knight comes flying over and lands into a jackknife pin. One, two, and for Mel, sadly, three. And we have new IWGP Junior heavyweight tag team champions. This this match was incredible. It, it was. There's no dispute on me on that. I was just not happy with the results. That being said, these with the reemergence of Knight and Kushida, I hate to say it, but right now, two most credible junior tag teams, or you could even say most credible besides TMDK. 
most credible tag teams in New Japan. The tag division is suffering right now. And these two teams were just the perfect representation of what they have in the back at this very moment. Um, Because I would put Catch 2-2 also as, as one of their top junior tag team and top tag teams in their their company um but yeah the tag team display though just the camaraderie of these teams the way that they effortlessly flowed with each other um both like within their team and then together as like the i want to say foursome that just they did so good um i was just just want to also say R.I.P. to Trilla Maloney's beard. Mm-hmm. Is that thing? Um, It'll come back. But it, it will, hopefully. Um, as will the titles, I'm sure. I mean, we're, we're starting to see more tag teams. Um, or we have all the tag teams that are coming out of, uh, don't we? For, for Best of Super Junior Tag League? We do. Super we Junior? Do. Super Junior. Not best of, but like Super well, and, Junior Tag League. And we will talk about that this Friday on the Japanese Wrestling Update. We will go through all the teams on that in that yes. tournament. So tune in, Japanese Wrestling Update on OLE. Yeah, yeah, we got we got we got stuff, and then we have to figure out our predictions on who's gonna take the blocks and all that. So yeah, we'll get to that later. But um yeah. Um I suspect the war dogs are gonna be a massive threat. In the the tag league, junior tag league here, so uh, it just it pains me to see them without the gold, because they have really like them and their battles back and forth with Catch Two Two, and also with the uh, Night and Kushida over the last couple of years have just been some of the most entertaining storylines that New Japan has had kind of going for it. Mm-hmm. So it, it pains me to see this one kind of come to an end. But that being said, again, Junior Tag League right around the corner. We'll see what what happens with, with these guys, what they do, how much force they bring out, if that drill killer is still going to be a problem. Um, and we'll see if, if they're going to be the guys at Wrestle Kingdom. Again, well, 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 and again, we'll have some predictions for you this coming Friday. Uh, so tune in to oh, uh, to Japanese wrestling. Uh, this uh, uh, lot our live to tape for live consumption on Friday, and we'll be out in audio form over the weekend over on A Plus Productions. So check that out. We so one more time for the champions. Yeah, let's go. I I I, mm-hmm. I was happy to see the title switch. I I wasn't mad about it. I was mad about one thing on this show. Mel was mad about it too. So, but it wasn't about this match because I love this match. IWGP Heavyweight oh Tag Team God. Championships. It's TMTK Shane Haste and Mikey Nichols with Hartley Jackson. Mel just learned his name yesterday. Versus the Bullet Club Rogue Army, Bad Luck Fale, and the oldest man in New Japan Pro Wrestling, Caveman Ugg, as this man is multiple thousands of years old. He is thousands that hey hey commentary said it. It it, it came from Chris Charlton, I believe the man. He is the, he is the he is the historian of New Japan Pro Wrestling. He knows he knows all of the information. I said, okay, <laughs> we'll go with okay on that one. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I thought it was, funny. but holy crap, it's enjoyable. I've I've seen Caveman uh, wrestle a time or two watching Tamashi shows. But holy crap, this man, for he is like Umaga big. Like he's big, like built like almost like like a little thinner, but like he's built like Umaga style or like uh Hanson from uh War the War the War Raider or uh War Machine. I was gonna say he actually reminds me of a combination of the two. Yeah. Because he's got the size and durability and flexibility that Hansen had, but what is the other one's name? Uh, uh, I know it's Roe now. I think I don't. I don't remember what his Indian name Ro? was. Yeah, it's Roe. Are uh, there? Oh, they're Eric and Ivar. 
And they were okay, Hanson and Rowe. They were Hanson and Rowe. They were Hanson and Rowe, and now they're Eric and Ivar. Yeah. Okay. Eric, okay, yeah, so. Eric now. Raymond Eric, Rowe. Yes, so. Raymond Rowe is what he was in New Japan. That's what he was. Raymond Rowe. That one. It felt like a combination of the two because if I'm not mistaken, he was a little bit more um kind of fighty-ish. Like he, he definitely had some kind of martial arts background, but then at the same time, he also had a little bit more aerial mm. kind of strikes also. More Japanese strong style. So he kind of like Ugg felt like a combination of both members of War Machine or War Hammer or whatever the hell they're called now. So like Ugg has this awesome move where he's running like as if you were going to go for a cr running crossbody, but he but you would spin, but he underspins. Like he comes like off the bottom to spin versus like well, it's like you see like uh, our truth running and spins. He just rotates spinning but he comes like backwards up into the spin it's like a corkscrew spin cross body that he does when he's running it's it is awesome i oh, is that what he was doing okay yeah he was kind of it was like a he was doing like a corkscrew spin but coming the opposite way than north most people with corkscrew spin when running so it was a really impressive yeah yeah um there's one point Folly or Ugg says uh, uh, uh Kim and Ugg just set up a table on the other side. Uh Folly puts Nichols on it and Ugg cut, hits a splash off the apron to Nichols through the table, taking him out for a good chunk of this match. Yeah. So Folly gets yeah. him with haste and he slams him down. And we didn't have Kevin Kelly. But Folly took him to the tongue and massage part of their baby. Yes, it's been so long since we've seen that. We've seen like the little one by Kaguma. Yeah. But it doesn't have the same impact. And he's going surfing a little bit while it's talking to massage really because he kind of like stood on him too. He was, <laughs> yeah. It was great. He was. Oh, man. Uh, Hayes does a really good spot, uh, fighting <laughs> back. Uh, it's a beautiful tornado DDT off the second to fall at one point. Um, but yeah, there's. Oh. Ugh, with that shotgun running boot, oh, just setting like it's just a, it's like a one one foot, ver like but it's not like a like a jump. It's just a running big boot, but he just hits so hard, sending Hayes into the corner. It's like a shotgun big boot. It was like oh, so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looked nasty. Yeah, um, there was just again, I I really those spinning crosses from Ugh, I just I have it multiple times in this match, man. But Hayes hit the drop kick. At one point, to to kind of negate that running spinning crossbody that he does, and it's a mm -hmm. it, it's a running punt kick to the head of Ugg. It just tags in Nichols. Uh, Nichols comes in, just hitting all these big power moves to Ugg. Um, he fights off a toss at one point. It gets like a swinging power bomb. Um, he slips out of the grenade. And TMG DK hit a double Uranagi or a double like slam to Fale, taking him out. Uh, Ugg comes back with these huge slaps, but TMDK gets them with the power bottom. They only get two. Uh, they 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 get up. They pose like they like they're powering up. They pick them up. They go classic up in the air, Thunder Valley, and TMDK retain the IWGP Tag Team Championships. Mm. So first of all. Let's talk about Ugg's entrance gear. So it was cool. He had that little like furry cape thing. But the saber tooth tiger skull mask was so freaking cool. Especially yes. when he was like roaring and shit and it would move with his face too. That was freaking cool. Yep. Um, I yep. loved when TMTK came out and they were just like freaking Shane Haste twerking in the eye. I love I, it. I love, Shane I love the Hayes, dynamic. Because, like, like he, he stops in front of Nichols. Nichols had to stumble over top of him twerking. Uh, <laughs> My guy. It, it's so the weird funny. stoic nature of Mikey Nichols and this just, mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna do whatever I want. In the it's the hysterical nature of Shane Hayes. It was, and it's just—it reminds it, me of Commander Zim. 
Do you oh, remember yeah. that cartoon? Mm -hmm. Little thing and the little, the little like dog. I've seen random, He's just like, yeah, random yeah, memes. Yeah. So that's about it. That's Shane Haste. Oh, it's so good. Oh, um, so it. This is the. Yeah. Um, this is the best I have ever, I think, seen Bad Luck Folly in my personal viewing of him in my Japan, New Japan viewing history. If that made any sense. Yeah, he has never sense. been so limber. He can move around very, very easily. When they went up for that, I, I think it was that like double Uranagi that they did, that little top bottom thing. Um, he power went up so effortlessly. Oh no, no they there was a a double, yeah, there was a double this is a double Uranagi there, the double Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. It, it he went up so good, so easily, and they got really good height on him on that too. Not that I doubted that they could. I mean he, Vale has also leaned out a lot. He's lost a lot of weight since the last time I saw him. Mm -hmm. Um but he also looks like like he already hit hard before. It looks like he has more control on where his hits are going. Because I feel like the old Bad Luck Folly under the leadership of, like, Kenny Omega and um, who came after Jay White, even. He was kind of like a haymaker folly. You know, he just kind of, his fists were going kind of all over the place. This match, he felt so... Like straight and narrow, like he knew what he was doing. Like I didn't doubt that he didn't like that he knew what he was doing beforehand. But like for the first time in a really, really long time, he looked like you know, 20, 30 year old Fale. You know what I mean? Yep. He was very, very movable. He was very he flowed effortlessly with his partner and he flowed effortlessly with tmdk it was so good i really really enjoyed this miss i actually like i had not low expectations but like i i didn't expect the match to be as good as it was it was a very pleasant surprise for me yeah again i i i didn't expect a lot out of this but this turned out so good and, yeah. and and I can't even say it's just because I like Folly did so good. Like he's just really impressing. Again, I think it's since starting to run Tamashi and having the his training school these last couple of last few years, he's really mm -hmm. evolved as a progressor because he's getting better because the students he works with make him better because he is learning from them in certain mm -hmm. in certain aspects and helping to make them better. So he gets to just get that much better at what he's doing. Tony Cozina is a Godsend help helping him transform in the way he did, man. Like, yeah. Love to him, you know? yeah, I was very impressed. Yeah, this was definitely and this showcased and showed off Caveman Ugg very, very well for yeah. for me. Because even though Bullet Club took the loss on this, this team still looks hella dominant. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We move on. Never open weight championship. It is the Rampage Dragon Shingo Takagi taking on the grip Ryo Oiwa with it with his cornerman Kose Fujita. I I, I I find that name, the grip, very interesting. Especially considering how this match went. Yeah. Um, so I was listening to commentary. They were talking how the never open weight title is really the BMF title here in New Japan. And do you know what a BMF title is, Mel? Big motherfucker. Baddest motherfucker. Oh, okay. I was close. Yeah. At least I got the motherfucker, right? <laughs> yeah, UFC has an actual BMF title. They have oh. an actual title that was awarded. The Rock awarded it the first time. <laughs> Ow. I mean, yeah. that would make sense. Uh, Oiwa did say before this match that if he wins the belt, he is going to challenge Kosei Fujita. And they are going to have a match for the open weight title, which is interesting. Two guys that came up together. It'd be interesting to see them war over that. But uh, they go, they get into this. Um, Takagi fakes faking out Oiwa early on in the match. Hits that dangerous driver to Kiyagi. Then dumps Oiwa to the floor. They're, they're, they end up fighting on the floor for a while. Just some good stuff there. Um, 
Takagi with the with that corner Larry puts him up top. Hits that beautiful super that superplex off the top. Follows it up with a sliding bomber, but he only gets two. Uh, just the trade, the strike trading here in this match was just been going back and forth, just smacking the crap out of each other. Um, they're striking each other. Oiwa gets a German Takagi with a pumping bomb bomber into an Oiwa Olympic slam, and both men are down. Oiwa does eventually get up, gets a sleeper, but it's fought off. Takagi scores with made in Japan, but he only gets two. Uh, just uh, Oiwa constantly is going for the grip, which is his uh, lariat or his spin out lariat move that he has. I think it's a spinning lariat the movie that he does. Again, he's only been back for like a match or two, so I'm not fully sure on his moveset yet. Um, but yeah, Takagi blocks it, but Oiwa does end up hitting the grip at one point. He falls with a doctor bomb. But he, oh, which is that gut wrench power bomb that uh, Medicine Willow Nightingale hit, uh, but it only gets to uh, Takagi gets out of the sleeper again. The grip gets dodged again, and Takagi hits a pumping bomber for do. Oh, he avoids the pumping bomber again, but hit and hits a backdrop. The grip again gets reversed into a backdrop, and the pumping bomber bomber followed by a power bomb, but again only two. Another pumping bomber is hit, and Shingo lifts him. Last of the Dragon. And Shingo Takagi retains the Never Open Weight Championship. Even though I was saying on the last show, yeah, I was getting getting this title. I, I didn't actually think he was taking the title. I, <laughs> I really didn't. Of course, now that he lost, you would be saying that, wouldn't you? Come yes. on. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> completely to Lulu. <laughs> You're picking up my lingo. I love it. I started um, picking up a lot of your lingo a while ago. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm so hip with the haps. Um. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with this. I had a lot of fun with this. I love Oiwa. I've loved him since he was a little young lion. His short hair. His one colored hair. We'll have to talk about the haircut, honey. But um, the the match was so good. A wee wee speed is just so crazy because Shingo's speed is so crazy for heavyweight. But Wewa was moving just a tiny bit faster at times, and it was super super impressive the way he could just get back to his feet almost instantaneously. It was really really cool. Um, I really like the gear Oiwa has. I feel that it fits the personality um, that he has, that he's working towards really well. I do feel like he's like more going to be like that traditional kind of power wrestler, uh, very similar to how um, someone like Sonata kind of wrestles, but with um, maybe less submissions. I didn't get a whole ton of inkling of submissions in this one, which is fine, as long as he knows how to defend against them. Um, Shingo didn't really mess around too much with submissions in this one, so I guess we'll have to wait and see what Oiwa is is capable of doing here. But overall, I felt this was a really, really great match. It was a great defense for Shingo, and was a great showcase for Oiwa coming back to New Japan, and unfortunately, you know, not picking up the win, not being able to challenge Kose Fujita. But what an interesting combo that would be, wouldn't it? To see those two styles clash with each other. Because as I mentioned, it wasn't really made apparent that Oiwa knows very, very well how to defend against submissions in this match. Kose Fujita, we know, is very about the submissions. Mm -hmm. That was a fun that, little voice there. Oi was been gone, uh, hanging out in other places, uh, doing yeah. his shirt. Well, hanging out in another company. Same, still in Japan, hanging out with another company. He's Fujita's been under the tutelage of of Saber, just learning every submission in the book. But we're not. I, I don't think Saber's taught, taught him every submission because Saber wants to keep a few for himself. I very much care that. <laughs> Obviously. There, you there can't are... teach all of your stuff to everybody because then somebody's always going to have a way to beat you. You can't have that. 
I want to see uh, Saber teach him the orienteering with Napalm Death because he doesn't really use that anymore. So I'd love to see Oiwa pull that old move out. I, it's just one of my favorite submissions because you're tying up everything. It's just it's so good. It's one where they, you, they end up splitting the legs apart and like making the person like do splits on the ground. But he, like he pulled, like he's got one leg and he's using the legs to pull That's the other. That's probably leg why most of these guys are not flexible enough. <laughs> Well, that's why I want Fuji to, to to learn it. So he starts pulling it out. Do it to show. Break break some bone. Break some crotches there. Oh dear, savage. Uh, we're gonna. I'll, I'll be talking about Fuji at the end of the show a little more too. We have some I bet. Coming out of the back coming out of some backstage stuff. Yeah. So we move on. I or NJPW or sorry. Before we got to this match. Uh, they did announce Battle of the Valley returns it next year in San Jose for, at the San Jose Civic Center. So more shows in NJPW shows in the evening for us. Let's go. Yay. We and like this. Say, and then they say something about World Tag League, but those dates have already been announced. So I don't know what they were talking about. It was all in Japanese. I have no idea. Um, we come back. It's the NJPW World Television Championships. The NJPW World Television Championship. <laughs> Uh, is Jeff Cobb yeah. defending against Yota Suji and Ren Narita? Um, Suji and Cobb both just taking out Narita early on. They're just uh, kind of they're talking. The announcers are talking about all the three Musketeers looking for the first singles belt, uh, and then Yuri Mura has already technically exceeded all of them by winning the KOPW title because uh, he used the first. He's technically because uh, he's bet like so. Yuri Mura is already better than the Ryohei uh, Three Musketeers, if you think about it, because he was the first one to win the title. Here you. He was the first one to win a singles yeah. title. Yeah, the ones that matter. Well, like, he's not the first one to win a title, though. Yeah, but Ren, Ren, a singles does, Ren, title. does Ren Narita or Yoda Suji's six man tag team championship reigns really count? Because nobody remembers Ren Narita from back then. And because nobody noticed him. I do. Yeah, but it, it's, it's... I it's, see it's you, six Narita. It's six-man titles. And you feuded with House of Torture. So... No, 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 no. So and he got beat by Okada. Make sure your marriage is right. And he got beat by Okada, so... Yeah. Well, like, yeah, it's, it's the bitch boy. Like, come on now. Yeah. So, Yumura, best of the four. Um, salmon Splash slash Mount Suji, but we, we're always going to call it the, the Salmon Splash here. To Narita, and then Cobb falls in with a standing moonsault to Narita. I loved it. That was great. Um, a lot, it, again, it, it, there's some uh, some good stuff here. Um, Narita booting Cobb off the apron. Suji then falls with a tope suicida. Narita runs uh, Suji really hard into the barricade. The video actually went out. A cable got pulled out. It was actually really funny. Oh, yeah, I loved that. The, everything went black. Yeah, or went gray, I think. It kind of went gray. It was like fu the gray fuzzy lines across the screen is what I saw. But See, I, it just went black from what I saw. Okay. Uh, Narita ends up running him into some chairs. Uh, this is where commentary calls Narita a heavyweight version of Yoshinobu Kanemaru. Yeah, I not could quite, I could agree with that. He's not quite that good yet, but you can see it coming. You can see it it's on it's side. on its way. He's certainly more technical than Kanemaru, though. Yeah, um, just kind of going through spots here. Uh, the hammer and sickle by Cobb to Suji, but he misses that standing moonsault. Uh, Suji hits him with that backbreaker and the face slam, but can't get the stomp. Uh, but Suji, he does hit a drop kick. He then falls in with the 17 crosses, but he only gets two. Uh, Narita does grab the face of Suji, like choking him from the top rope. Falls it up with a hell's guillotine off the top, but Cobb does break up the pin. Um, towards the end of this match, Tour of the Island is stopped by Suji. He hits a knee to the head. Gene Blaster does get reversed into Tour of the Islands. One, two, and the ref is pulled out of the ring. Uh, the low blow by Narita is then blocked by Cobb. 
and he hits a shot. Uh, Narita slips out of Tour of the Islands, hits Cobb, gets the push-up bar, hits Cobb with it, hits a double cross, and Ren Narita is your new Japan NJPW World Television Champion. Uh... It sucks. It sucks so bad. Because, like, I mean, I wanted to see Narita start growing. This is a better place for him to start. It just, and to be honest, like, do we think this is maybe a, a, a reward for being patient about the whole situation with Jack Perry? Because Jack Perry came in and pretty much hijacked the Ren Narita character and everything he was doing early in the year. Is this a thank you for delaying your career four months so that we can train this scraggly haired goat headed dingus to, to, to leave us and go back to AEW? I mean, arguably we sent him back to AEW, a much better version of himself that was given. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I would I have preferred to see the KOPW title, maybe first. Yes, am I terribly mad about this? Not terribly, because it gives something for Cobb to focus on, to to kind of come back. Because his promos going like into all of his title defenses recently have been so good, but like he's probably pissed now. So what's an angry Jeff Cobb going to look like barreling down on you wanting to get his championship back? I'm curious to see. Yeah. I'm just sick of Suji losing everything. Yeah, but Suji just happened to not get, he didn't get pinned at least. That's true. And, And this is a culmination of the last year and a half for this man. If you think about it, he was the man that lost to Zack Sabre Jr. at Russell Kingdom in the initial tournament final for this belt. That's true. <laughs> that is true. 19, 20, 21 months. 21 months journey to this championship for this man. So it is kind of appropriate that it is his first title. I guess. I or his guess. first single title. It is appropriate. So sadly, I just like seeing gold in House of Torture. Hmm. It's my problem. So, that, so sadly, from House of Torture to the House of Torture of AEW, it's the Young Bucks make an appearance on screen. They do work with Perry, don't they? Yeah, and they kind of are the House of Torture of New, of, of AEW, uh, and they. <laughs> All they said here was they're gonna be at Wrestle Dynasty. You're the goddamn EVPs. Of course you're gonna be at Wrestle Dynasty. We didn't need a goddamn video for it, you jerks. And I'm not a young buck mm. hater. I just don't care for a lot of some of the shit they've been doing lately. So see, I I've I've never enjoyed the Bucks. So, like, when I saw this, I was like, okay, you can be there all you want. Just don't waste our time wrestling. <laughs> Please. Yeah. We know they're going to. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see what it is that they're going against. Because, like, those are, are those the AEW Tag Team Championships? Because they don't have a junior division. No. So, they're going to be... So, are they... So are these two actually considered heavyweights now, or are they still junior division in, in New Japan standards, I wonder? I honestly don't know. I would love to like, see a Wrestle Dynasty them versus War Dogs, personally, but... I was just going to say, because I feel like the War Dogs would give them a really, really great tag team match, but like if we're talking about a heavyweight tag team, I'd I'd hesitate to give you one. I don't I don't know one that would be really 
competent enough to do it and, and to pull, be able to pull off a win, which is not going to happen anyway because it's AEW. Evil and Yujiro Takahashi. And then we can just ignore the match, uh, take our piss breaks and everything because we're going to be watching this at like from like 1 to 6 a.m. Or no, actually, probably not, though. We're going to watch Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, no, no, we're probably not watching this one live, but I could take a piss break during that match. Fair. Yeah, I, I am not very interested in this. There you go. Yeah. But if it's War Dogs, you know, we'd have to watch it because I'd want to see just how badly they're going to let Drilla and Connors actually go War Dogs on them. Mm. Because we both know we've seen the War Dogs at their best and we've seen the War Dogs at their worstest. With how far are the Bucks going to let them take them if that's the case? If that's even the War Dogs. For all we know, we, they could be like wanting to do capitalize on the thing that happened later in this show, which we'll talk about later. I oh, can't really bring like, it up I, without. I, I'd like to see them face Bishamon. Mm-hmm. Look at that. I would rather gouge my eyeballs out with a spoon. Well, something we don't want to go drive. Oh, no, I kind of want to go drive with those over the spoon for this match. Hiroshi Tanahashi, 25th anniversary, six man tag match. Hiroshi Tanahashi, Shota Umino, El Fantasma versus Host Tortures, Evil, Yujiro Takahashi, and Yoshinobu Kanemaru with the Little Dick. Um, Team Tanahashi all coming out in Roman Garb because it's a promotion for Gladiator 2. Um, and it was adorable. Sure. And it came out, and I'm like, what the hell? Is he have a little toy sword? What's going on? EOP came out with his spear, and I'm like, this is glorious. Mm-hmm. And then Tanahashi comes out with his little bow and arrow, and I'm just like, I'm going to need some explanation soon commentary. And they did explain it is a promotion for Gladiator <laughs> 2, which is coming out in November. So they were the sponsors of this show. So... Um, they get into the ring. ELP uh gets his first dragon screw ever, according to the announcer. He's never done one before in his life, according to the announcers. Okay, yes, okay, yeah. then good job, um, ELP. I told you I believed in you. I don't have a lot for this match, I'll admit. I kind of stopped taking notes during this match. Um Umino getting tossed in the Explorer's Corner repeatedly, but eventually comes back with a big Exploder Suplex, but I didn't write down to who. Um, yeah. Uh, she does get triple teamed one point, and Dick to Dick contact does happen. Damn you. Um, Gross. Yeah, the Pimp King gets stopped. Uh, Umino tosses it evil uh, to evil. The ref, and then the ref's getting mad at him. They kind of pull like almost an Eddie Guerrero here. Uh, sort of like a version of it. Uh, Umino and Shota uh, with dual planches to the floor. Tanahashi. Right Umino now. and Shota? Oh, Umino. Umino and, uh, Umino and Shota. Umino and ELP with dual <laughs> planches to the floor. Uh, Tanahashi then hits Yujiro with a sling blade. Goes up to the top. Ha! Ha! Blow! For the win. ELP and Shota bowing down. To the grandmaster after the match. Let's talk about the match before we get into the post match. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot to say on this one. Um, I wasn't really too into it because of of the House of Torture aspect, <laughs> the gladiator aspect. Just had me laughing the whole time. Uh, uh, I always have to bring it up right now because, like, God damn, does ELP look like a little Joe Hendry? And now he looked like a gladiator Joe Hendry. It was phenomenal. I believe in ELP. I believe in ELP. I okay. loved it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't I don't have a whole lot to add to this one. Let's take us into the post because the post was like, importante. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, so ooh, I forgot to Forgot to load that one up. Ha ha, I'm bad at my job. I'm terrible at my job. I'm bad and bad and bad at my job. Yeah. Um, okay. 
So post match, Tanahashi gets on the mic, starts cutting a promo, thanking the crowd, thanks everybody for coming mm-hmm. uh, in. Um, this is another hard five victory, but says the finish line is in sight, and I'm like, oh, oh I'm thinking, oh shit, is he retiring at Wrestle Kingdom? But then he says, oh, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Um, then he made just a picture of Tanahashi on his own. And he makes an announcement that he will be retiring at Wrestle Kingdom on January 4th, 2026. So Tanahashi is pulling a John Cena. Wait, what? John Cena is doing a run for over 2025 and he will, he will retire at the end of the year after doing a bunch of matches throughout 2025. He is oh. that. He is, I think what he said is he's taking a break. Like he's not going to take really big projects during that year. He might do a little small filming here and there. But he's supposedly signed up for anywhere from 40 to 60 dates over over the entirety of 2025 with WWE to wrestle. So he is going oh. to be doing a retirement tour throughout the entire year and getting some big matches with old people and new people and maybe even a bear. <sighs> Old friends and new friends and even a bear. Always choose the bear. Uh, but um, so Tanahashi is going to give us a year-long farewell tour and with ending at Wrestle Kingdom. I I'm think not gonna I, lie, I'm happy about this. Me too. Me like too. we've been talking a hot minute, how we're worried about Tanahashi when he's moving around in there, you know. Well, last summer he did that run in with with Bolton and Taguchi, and they made it to the ring, beat up the guys, and removed them before Tanahashi was able to waddle his way down to the ringside. You know he he does need, I think, to take the time to focus on being a presidente, and I think this is a good idea um, because he's it's not like he's not going to be involved, right? Like. He's great on commentary, so I think he'll be involved in commentary regularly, so I don't think he's going to be going away. But, yeah, Andre, how do you feel about this? I'm okay with it. Again, we've been talking about him, that he's wearing down. He's going to have to hang it up, and I'm glad that he's hanging it up at the the, start of 2026. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's it's right. And my question is, what what is this final match? What is this Wrestle Kingdom? Is it a big grandiose singles match? Is it a multi person? I want to face some of my favorite opponents over the years. Like if it's a singles match, who do you think it should be? Should it be the next big thing? Should it be Bolt, Bolt Moleg, or should would it be a classic like maybe getting Okada to come back and do a one final singles with Tanahashi? Like, what would you think if it, if it was a singles? What would be your feeling? What I would like to see would be the passing of the torch, which is what they usually do in Japan. Um, North American wrestling, we're very sentimental here. So that, you know, when someone's retiring, they typically win their retirement match. Whereas in Japan, it is very much the opposite. It's almost like, a, here's the reason this person is retiring. They can't keep up anymore. We saw that with um, Liger, who lost both his exiting matches against Hiromu Takahashi, as well as Minoru Suzuki. Um, where we saw the the younger generation and uh, the the old rival kind of thing both your suggestions are very very good um but i think what i know he will probably go for don't 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 let that inflate your head anymore sir um i think that we i think what we will get will depend on what he does um, going forward after the announcement, if we start to see him, you know, even more buddy buddy with Bolton as he has been, I suspect that that would probably be the pathway that we would start to go down. 
And how great would it be for Bolton to have that happen too, though? Mm-hmm. It'd be great for his career. Yeah. But again, I could see Tanahashi wanting to go out in the biggest match possible, which I feel mm-hmm. for him, his biggest match possible is one more time with Okada. If that's how he chooses to look at it. Again, it's how he chooses to look at it. Remember, he is the president. He can do whatever the hell he wants. He wants himself a team. Well, being, being that the outside people want to come back in, right? Yeah. And I, I truly believe if Tanahashi wanted the Okada singles, Tony Khan mm-hmm. would be like, yeah, yeah, Okada, you're heading to Japan. Like, I guarantee you Tony Khan would acquiesce to that. He would do it. Because, again, he has utter, he, he has respect for Mr. Hiroshi Tanahashi. Maybe not the rest mm-hmm. of the world, but he has respect for Hiroshi Tanahashi. Um, I sure don't for Kenta. That's for damn sure. Yeah. So, post-match, we get... Uh, after this, we got a beatdown. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, they come in. Uh, Outstretch comes in, they start attacking. ELP tries to make the save, but he gets taken out by Narita with the push up bar. They continue with the attack. He says, You're going to retire. How about you retire right now? You get to, don't get to choose. I choose. This is my company. And yeah, I really don't care. It meant nothing in the end. Yep. Like, um, just I, evil running his mouth. I did make a note, though, afterwards. Uh, ELP and Umino could be a, can make a really good team for the World Tag League. I agree. They worked very, very well together. I feel like ELP would be to Shota what ELP was to Taiji Ishimori. Mm. He would be something... Because Umino is pretty charismatic. He's pretty outgoing. But he's also very introverted. I feel like ELP could bring out that extrovert in him that would be able to get Shota to for me, anyway, be able to help me gravitate to him a little bit more. I think so. Yeah, I thought I thought an idea. Yep. So we move on. IWGP <laughs> Junior Heavyweight Championship. It is Doki the show. Uh, show dragging Doki yeah. out of the ring, ripping his jacket off of him, choking him. Uh, the ref won't let him use a chair. He ends up ta- ta- taking Show Makato and throwing Show Makato into the ref. Uh, then takes another young lion and tosses the young lion onto the ref on the ground. Murashima. Um, Murashima. Uh, then he hits, uh, Show hits Doki with the, over the head with a chair. Uh, they get in the ring. Show has the wrench. Uh, pull, and he ends up pulling off of Doki's mask. And I'm going to just go to it now. Uh, this is what we saw. Uh, yeah, horrifying. Very K- Kishin Liger esque here. Uh, with the mask pulled off, uh, very much Jushin Liger's alter ego, uh, Kishin Liger. He he has all that face paint on. And he hits a blood mist to show, uh, and hit take the wrench from show and hit show with it. Doki is unhinged. Um, yes, picks him up, gets him set up for Super Lucha de la Luna as the ref is bringing the bell to start the match. Hits yes, Super Lucha de la Luna. Hits Super Lucha de la Luna. Rolls through, essentially into a cha- hitting a chaos. Suplex de la Luna for the win in officially 14 seconds. Holy shit. Now, yeah. was this what I was expecting from match for this title? No. Did it end up being something actually really fantastical that I can actually forgive for being so short? Yeah. Yeah. I, I this in equal parts like like disappointed me, but then also made me very excited to see because we saw this development with Doki. I would never have expected this to happen. And then for him to be sitting there like looking like a possessed tamatanga, sitting there like until he put his mask on. And as they said on commentary, it was like he became this like feral demon until he put his mask back on. And then he was back to Doki. It was the most crazy, mind blowing, like cool thing I've seen New Japan do in a hot minute. 
I liked it. I can forgive it being so short. And, and to a point, I literally just watched the show because Post Wrestling was reviewing it. Uh, Sakura Genesis 2017 that happened in the same building um, had that like a minute and a half junior title match that uh, Kushida beat um, not Kushida, uh, uh-huh. Hiromu beat Kushida to retain the title in like a minute and a half setting up a match at Dominion. Just, same yeah. building, same kind of situation somebody winning in very quick fashion. Um, so yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I like it's it. I dig it. This is that I watch something and then it happens again in the same kind Right? Of well, take yeah. us what happened in the post, though, because that was where the real interesting ish of this happened. I apologize. I do not have a picture because I forgot to grab that picture. I just grabbed the post match picture. Oh. Kanemaru attacks with a uh, 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 the Santori surprise, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he attacks to the Santori surprise. Um, and yeah, uh, he's being a dick, as what? usual. He's like, the ocean over Kanemaru. He's a dick. I'm trying. He's in house of to torture. Kill. Come on now. I'm trying to kill time here, late lady. I'm just trying to kill time. Yeah. <laughs> trying to and I'm trying to help you. We're going. We're going. Yoshinobi Kanemaru being being a dick to go. No dick to contact. <laughs> I didn't even think about that one. A dick to go. Uh, you're funny. Uh, right? I know. This is why most people love me. Yeah, so Kanemaru attacks. He's beaten up on Doki. And then we get a return. The return I didn't think was going to happen here. I was ready for it baby the man who i was very much getting behind before the start of this year um he make he makes his way out it's master watto in a different look he does no longer have the blue hair and looking pretty goddamn fly in that suit when he first came out i didn't think it was master watto i thought it was yo me too. That's what I thought. I'm like, oh my god, yo! And then, I, and, the, and then they're like, it's Watto. And I'm like, oh shit, it is Watto. <laughs> it is Watto that he hit Recitamente on Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and I was like, hot dig the thing. Oh, Master Watto is bad. I was so happy him hitting Recitamente there. He gets the mic. Just... I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna put it on. There it is. There it is. Um. He says, everybody and Doki, it's been a while. I'm back and healthy. I will challenge you for the IWGB Junior Heavyweight Championship. And then they get into each other's faces. And it's just like, I pray this is Wrestle Kingdom. But there is, I I don't know. They did announce the Power Struggle show. So I don't know if it's that Power Struggle. But I want this to be Wrestle Kingdom. I feel like Power Struggle will be a little too soon, but it wouldn't surprise me if they did because they would need someone to challenge for that show. Yes, yes, it is happening. I just ch- I just looked it up. It is happening. It is, it is for Power Doki Struggle? Power Struggle, Doki versus Wado. When is that? Sorry? Uh, November the 4th? November 4th. Right? It's the fu- also the finals. Uh, it'll be the finals of the... Uh, Super Junior also there. So they got a little over a, uh, a month, a little less than a month to, to kind of get the feud kind of rolling. I, I'm going I'm to check it out. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm excited but, for this. I'm really happy to see Watto back. We've been missing him, longing for him to come back and, and shake up the division. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, Doki nor Master Watto is in the Super Junior Tag League this year. Well, I mean, who could they really tag with? I don't think Takamichinoku is around enough. Yuya is injured. Sonata and Taichi don't qualify in Doki's team, because when you call yourself just five guys, kind of limits yourself. They could team um, together as reluctant partners. Yeah. I don't think that would go for. Him. No. Um, and wasn't Watto's partner last year Desperado? They were both yeah. part of Hontai. 
Yeah, they had they, but they were a team last year. They were that like team that weren't getting yeah. along at first, but then learned to bond as the tournament went on. Yeah, Wado was doing the work friends and Desperado. It was essentially like the male version of whatever friendship dynamic that Wednesday Adams and Eunice had. I think that was her name in uh, the Wednesday show. Never watched it. Do you remember Wednesday was the dark, broody looking one? And then her roommate is like the rainbow. Never watched werewolf it. Werewolf girl. I haven't either, but I, I, I am on the internet enough. Did you literally just say rainbow werewolf? Yeah. Okay. She likes rainbows and she's a werewolf. Like, what do you want me to say? All right. We move we don't on. Judge people what they like. We move on. Global Heavyweight Championship match. Hiroki Goto chat with, with Yoshiyashi. Challenging David Finley with Gato. Um, Goto's yeah. kids are at ringside for this match. Um, and Finley's a dick. Just simply. Yes, he is. Goto into the barricades <laughs> on the floor. Uh, flipping off Goto's kids. Getting in their faces. Yelling at them. He's a real dickhead. Um, and he constantly is taking him in and out early on. Uh, just sticking with them on the floor and messing with the kids. Um, go to this fight back. Hits a wheel kick, sending Finley into the post. Um, again, uh, they're in, in the ring. Good good wrestling in the ring. Uh, Ushiguroshi gets reversed, and uh, and uh, Finley gets the Northern Irish Curse backbreaker. Love that backbreaker. That thing looks so good, though. Damn, is it good. Yeah. It's going to destroy his knee, but damn, is it good. <laughs> hmm. uh, these two are just beating the living piss out of each other with their strikes yeah. up to each other. So good. Uh, the tra- uh, yeah. uh, go to Ducks a Lariat, hits a reverse GTR, but Finley comes back with a Lariat, hits a Dominator, but he only gets two. Um, Finley does get a uh, switch of those cross fake strikes, hits the Buckle Bomb. But Coda comes right back out with a huge Lariat. They both go down. Again, really good stuff in this match. Uh, uh, Goto uh, comes like fighting back at one point. Then he climbs up the ropes, but Goto uh, is let like he's got him in like a choke. But go, uh, feeling starts to like climb the ropes, but Goto lets him go and gets him on his shoulders. Hits Ushi Garoshi. Love that move. Um, Goto with the chest kicks. Hit the GTW, but he can only get to. Um, Finley fights out of GTR, but Goto hits the headbutt. Goto lifts him, hits Shoten Kai, but the GTR. I wrote GRT. Uh, the GTR reversed, and Finley hits Trash Panda into Oblivion, or the Trash Panned into Oblivion, as I wrote. There's no ah uh, on Panda. Um, Gato distracting the ref. Yoshiyashi also trying to get Gato. Uh, Finley hit, gets the Shillelagh, uh, hits it, but only gets two. Falls with a power bomb, only gets two. He goes for overkill, but it gets reversed into a GTR. But Finley slips out of the GTR, lifts him up. Overkill for the win. And Godo's daughter is crying her eyes out. And Finley is such a dick. He's going over. He's like, Meh. and he's just such an a-hole. And I absolutely love it. Because weaponize the children, and children are not our future. I love that our catchphrase has now weaponized the children. Mm-hmm. One of them, anyways. Oh, so funny. You're right, though. He was he was an absolute dick. Absolute dick. The money he's probably got to spend to make that right, I can only match. Oh, uh, but how great was it that that they were able to utilize the children in that way, in, in such a way that it helped build the story, it helped character development for Finley? Because if y'all didn't think he was a heel before, watch this match. <laughs> you will be won over to the dark side. Um God damn, does David Finley sell like a mofo too? There was at one point where um, he was on the top turnbuckle, Goto and knocked the feet out from under him, and he just bounced the back of his head off that turnbuckle and hit the 
the mat really, really hard. He just he's so good at, at elevating his opponent as much as himself. He's one of those people who knows that if his opponent looks good, he looks better, especially when he's coming out, he, when he knows he's coming out on, on the good end of this. Um, I loved the heel work in this. I absolutely loved it because now we're seeing a very clear kind of dif- difference between House of Torture heel and War Dog heel. We're seeing a different kind of heel work heel mentality we're seeing a lot more connivingness a lot more like kind of structure coming out of finley in that crazy chaos i love it and that he's now put down two very dominant members of the njpw locker room i am very very curious to see where his global domination takes him next We are finally moving on to the match that meant most to me on this show. <laughs> the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship is Tetsuya Naida versus my boy, Zach Sabre Jr. Let's go. Oh. Hey, baby. Uh, so Tetsuya Naito is here, Sabre out uh, with Kosei Fujita, Shane Hayes, Mikey Nichols, and Hartley Jackson. He has Almost all the members that are there, for some reason, Oya would decide to stay in the back a little jerk. Um, but, yeah, a uh, little jerk. Um, so, as I, as I was talking about... He got beat up by Shingo Takagi. Yeah, but so but it still come out, hobble his way out. He hobbled his way into the backstage uh, presser, so... Did he, or was he carried? No, he, he walked. He kind of walked. He, like Shane Hayes was supporting him. But Shane Hayes could have supported him to the ring. God damn it. And get and like they could have set him up on a chair. Like, come on. Not like they don't have enough chairs there. There's always people, somebody hitting somebody with some chair. Come on. <laughs> um so yeah, as I was saying, the Secure Genesis is. back to Secure Genesis 2017. Saber did have his first ever sumo hall match against Hiroki Goto uh for the never title. It was his first time in Sumo Hall. And now he's returned here seven and a half years later. Go after the biggest prize in the game. IWGP World Championship, man. Um, and I did write, oh, we were conspicuous by his absence from quartering Saber. I did write that down. This match, what I I took so much notes here. Holy Take fuck. Us into it. I know I'm you were. I'm not even going to go through this. Uh, uh, this was Saber working is ass off her early on working the the transition wrestling and everything uh, but Naito really doing a good job at reversing out early on in this match mm-hmm. um and getting like just really kind of learning um like the spot where he went for the roll into the pose but then Saber just runs over and grabs the arm into the arm bar but Naito went for the <laughs> LIJ pose that was perfection that was so not funny. a perfect. um Naito really trying to work the neck. Um, he ends up space. He gets him to the floor. Base. He sweeps the legs, and uh, when he's Sabers on the apron and bar- baseball slides him into the barricade. Um, he runs him into the like apron, then barricade, then apron, then barricade a couple times. Um, but yeah, he starts working the neck. Uh, Saber does get back in the end. She's really working those leg leg submissions and transitioning throughout the body though. Um, again, they're. Uh, Dido hangs Saber in the corner, and he drives the neck down onto the one knee. Ah, oh, that neck breaker. Yeah. It falls up with that standing neck breaker eight for two. Then he gets him in that leg trap full of Nelson. And Saber, what I really was impressed, every time Naito put him in a submission, he is trying to untie himself. He's not immediately going for the ropes, unlike every other wrestler. He doesn't want, like, and they even say it on commentary, Saber doesn't want to go to the ropes. He wants to work his way out and get the advantage back in his corner. But he is very, but, so that's what he's doing throughout here. And I was really impressed with that. Um, Naito does get Saber up the top, hits the Frankensteiner off the top. Uh, Saber does come back, scoring a big boot, but then uh, Naito coming back with a headlock takeover into the Pluma Blanca, which is the Kochi clutch. Uh, and again, Saber's trying to work his way out of it. But he eventually has to 
Like he's using his legs, trying to get his legs up to like break stuff. He can't he gets one arm kind of out, but he's still like locked in. So he does have to eventually go to the ropes again. Um, so uh, Naito starts working over the neck again. He hits Esperanza, spiking Saber on the top of his head off, off the second rope. Saber tries to reverse him, but Naito ends up hitting a running Destino. But he only gets two. Um, Saber then goes to work uh, on some mission again. Goes for Clarky Cat. Uh, work at manipulating the fingers a lot here. Um, he's pulling him, stretching him, torquing him back. But Naito does finally get a foot on the ropes. Uh, Naito reverses a sack driver into Valencia, uh, but Saber reverses uh, into Valencia. But Saber then reverses it into a uh, but Saber reverses that, uh, or sorry, he gets to Lens, and then Saber reverses the Destino into the Gotch style pile driver. Shout out to Minoru Suzuki right there. Uh, both men are down. I even tweeted it out. They had the video, so I sh- re shared it. I'm like, Saber paying tribute to his mentor, uh, or something like that. I, 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 tweeted, I tweeted that. <laughs> uh, I loved it. Um, Destino gets slipped out again, but uh, Naito gets a backslide into a small package for two. Uh, Naito hits like a Pele style kick, but Saber comes back with a big layer. Falls with another with, with another Zack driver. But this is where or falls with the Zack driver here, but Naito kicks out at one, and Saber then hits another Zack driver, but can only get two. Saber then gets up. He's firing himself up. Picks up Naito. One more Zack driver. Finally say it. Zack Saber Jr. is your IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. It is all so sweet, baby. Oh. Uh, ha, I love the picture because look how much bicep is in that picture. Oh. Look how much gold is technically in that picture. Half of those men are or half of those men are champions. And, dude, Harvey oh. Jackson might have a championship on Australia for all we know. I mean, big dates. He's a, I think him and his buddy take team champions over here. It counts. Uh, uh, big, Eagles. Teach, big Teach is the MLW National Openweight Champion. Yeah, Robbie Eagles. I'm pretty sure he's still a champion in Australia. PWA. Yes. We got a faction of champions sitting on top of NJPW, and I dig it. Dig it. I love it. What a celebration. Um, I don't have anything. At, well, there's one part I did have to add to the match. There was that one part at the beginning where they were doing the death lock, kind of back and forth, where Naito first got Zach mm. to the death lock, and he just started bitch slapping Zach while he was down on the ground, and Zach was just sitting there like, uh huh, uh huh, yeah, you keep doing that shit, you keep pulling your shit, and and then suddenly he reversed it, and now Naito's in the the death lock and Sabre Jr. sitting there like, huh? 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 I loved it. It just shows so much about the relationship that those two have with each other and how they were able to take a very serious match like this and have little pockets and moments of, of hilarity that were able to break up the intensity of the match. Um, flowed so good together. I'm mm-hmm. very excited about um this title run, I have a suspicion that he's going to have this title for quite some time. Mm-hmm. I think so too. Um, I, I feel like next year is going to be about building the next young star. Yeah, and, we're going to see a resurgence of the Musketeers. And I feel like Saber is going to be that presence who is fluent in Japanese, but he's very much appealing to the American, North American crowd because he's he speaks English. He can really get across his charisma and everything over here. Um, yeah. and, speak. and I feel like they're going to run with him for the year, and he eventually drops it to whoever, like, is it a Yoda Suji? Is it a Yu Yu Mura? Is it a Shota Umino? Is it a uh, Red Narita? Probably, probably not him. Uh, is it a Ryohei Oiwa? Again, it could be any of those guys. I feel like it's going to be Every, any of them except Narita could be that person challenging at Wrestle Kingdom in 2026. To Anyone but Narita. Yeah. Poor Narita. Until he stops being torturous, 
I'm I don't need to see him in the, the main title program. That's for damn gosh darn sure. Well, to be fair, the character of Ren Narita has become far more interesting in House of Torture than he was when he was with Han Tai. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, hundred percent. It's just he's still not for me. He uh, still sucks. Yeah. So, you, you got anything else? No, no, I I am good. So Saber gets the mic. He, he, he in Japanese he does say, "It's coming home." In Japanese, yes. and and, and uh, Chris Charlton did make sure he said that, that to, to to translate that. Uh, and he says some stuff, and then Sonata makes his way out. And in while Mato's suit was nice, this man the, Sonata's got suit game. That's for gosh darn sure he got suit game. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. He he might not what he lacks in charisma, he makes up for in in aesthetic. If that you man saw, is a very fashionable man. If you saw Sonata walk into a club, you would think that man is going to riz up every lady in this club. Then you realize oh, no, you realize this man has no riz. He has no charisma about him and he couldn't uh get a girl if it was if it was him and her in a brown paper bag because but I'm I'm joking. <laughs> the man could he wouldn't but understand if she was grinding up on him, right? Yeah. <laughs> he he's just got zero he doesn't like he just has zero charisma. Um yeah. and it says uh it, it's his his last chance to become a champion this year. Next week at Royal Quest we face off. Why don't we make it for the title? And Saber does agree to this. But Shoto Umino makes his way out. He is not happy about this. Um do you notice Umino got booed here? Well, because how rude. Yeah, he's ruining. They Well, Sonata's already come out and ruined the celebration. So now Umino's yeah, it's rude enough ruin. that Sonata interrupted, but now it's ruder but still I, that Shota is. I can forgive Sonata because he's taking his shot to make sure his match in, in six days' time from this show is for the title. So I can I I can forgive that because I didn't think Sonato after he got agreed to the title was gonna stay. I figured he was just gonna come in after the title match and leave, let him keep celebrating. But Umino comes out and he's getting booed. Um he says he said tells everybody to relax. Tanahashi is now he's retiring, Hantai isn't in danger of being worn down. Hantai needs to be uh re have a resurgence and he wants to challenge for the belt. Um and then Saber says, This week's a little hard, maybe next week. Like it was Saber's line to this. Then Takagi shows up, says he wants a shot of the title. They're one and one at the G one. He says he's beat he said he beat him at the G one this year. Uh Shota says, Yeah, but I beat both of you, so I deserve it first. Um and Saber says, Everyone calm down. I'm tired and I just won. I'll rest your Sonata first. After that, give me time to think about it. Shut the hell up and get out of the ring. I just love that last part. Which is uh, fair because again, how rude, Takagi! I expect better out of you. Like again, I will forgive the Sonata one because he's taking. He's kind of he wants to force the hand to get the title match, which I get. But uh -huh, the other uh -huh. two could have just done this backstage. It could have. They could have interrupted the press conference and got and got the, yeah. got the just all this across. But no, they have to ruin the celebration. So they all leave. It's not necessary. So they all leave. Saber says the summer of Saber is over and the era of Saber has begun. It is also the era of TMDK because TMDK is a team is his team and they are the mighty and the mighty don't kneel. Uh, and then they, uh, he goes through through the crowd. Like he goes through the crowd and um just celebrates with everybody wearing tmdk gear other people are trying to get pictures with them and he's just like walking past me right if you're wearing tmdk orange or you have a band or you have something tmdk he or saber jr he he is taking pictures and posing with those people but he's ignoring mm -hmm. everybody else and i respected that so much <laughs> reminiscent of our favorite mitch clark yes Yes, but although he did violent tip touch a bunch of people at the last show, though. That's true. That's true. Because they're catching on to him, though. Yeah, we have to come catching up with on to the treasure that we know as Mitch Clark. We have to come up with something new then. Um, 
So again, it, and then Saber ends up heading to the back. Uh, Haste is like on commentary. Saber's going through the crowd, just like yelling, yelling random shit. You can't quite understand, but you know he's like celebrating it. And like uh, mm-hmm. I think Charlton's responding to him, and then like uh, what's it? Uh, uh, Walker has to leave because he has to go catch a bus to go to the airport to fly out <laughs> or something. So yeah. it's, it's, it's just got Charlton on commentary, so essentially celebrating this because you know how, be- how behind Saber he's been throughout all oh, yeah. of this um 100%. i didn't watch the entirety of the press conference because i decided to go to bed after after a few minutes uh but they did go to the comment or to the press conference backstage um and i and i they did write this i hope we see shoto versus shingo at some point in the next little bit to see who gets a shot at saber at wrestle kingdom i feel like it's gonna be one of the two of them at wrestle kingdom so yeah yeah it's true and that's Saber, true. And if that's the case, it'll most likely be Shota because what a main event that would be. Yeah. So the the only stuff I've gotten from the press conference so far is that I saw that uh, Saber calls Oiwa the mullet. He doesn't call him the grip. He calls him the mullet. Yeah. Um, and Saber and all the boys are drinking Sapporos. Um, yep. And then they did give uh, Fujita the mic, and he did end up chal- – uh, the open challenge was made by Gabe Kidd for uh, – Fighting Spirit Unleashed on November 8th. Yeah. One Kosei Fujita is taking that open weight to heart. Just like Leo Rush before him, he's taking that open weight to heart because he challenged Gabe Kidd for a strong open weight championship match. So, And guess what? Gabe Kidd came back with the response saying, yes, he will face Fujita there and he's going to beat the hell out of him. Of that, I have no doubt. Yeah. Fuji. Mm-hmm. So we're getting Fujita. Versus, Wait, come on now. We're getting Fujita versus Gabe Kidd in the main event of Fighting Spirit Unleashed. I am so ready for that show. I'm very curious to see how it goes because, as we are well aware, Fujita is very interesting and unique uh, move set. He has a lot of technicality in there, but a lot of high speed kind of moves as well. Um, Gabe Kidd is just. A Swiss Army knife. He, he, like, you try to run past him, and he just has an appendage that sticks out and just bitch slaps you while you're running by. It's crazy. But we saw what happened with him um, and Leo Rush, where he literally just hit Leo in the face so hard that it split his eye. <laughs> so I am concerned, but I am also very hopeful in the exposure that this is going to get for Fujita. Mm. Um, I do not suspect that we will see Fujita win that title, but I suspect that we will see one hell of a fizzy yuck and match for it. He's not going to go down without a fight. That's for damn sure. Oh, and point to point to Fujita. Did you notice after Shingo Takagi's match with Oiwe, he was staring down Fujita hard after the match like like there was points where he was like looking right at him and Fujita was like staring right back at him at Shingo yeah with Shingo after the never title oh. match yeah oh, so yeah. I I'm also hoping we get that match too so <laughs> oh yeah the let the building of Fujita begin please that is the future of this business if he just becomes an open weight champion instead of a junior champion I'm fine with that I would be too yeah yeah I would still like to see him win the junior title, just to say that he did. Mm. But its I don't think it needs to be his first. No. Uh, Osprey, I guess Osprey did win the junior title first, and he did win an ever-openweight yeah, title just, at one point, yeah, too. So correct. Yeah, I, yeah. I can see it. Yeah, because he faced Shingo for both of them. Yep. Yeah. yeah actually, I remember Osprey lost at the Cobb at that G1 special, that G1 Supercard in Madison Square Garden. He had lost to the yes. Cobb in that match. I remember him losing to Cobb. Yes, well, that was before Will Ospreay became the Will Ospreay that we know today. Also, that was when he was still... Video game Ospreay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Still, still pretty little. Any yeah. wills. But we have come to the end of this show. We want to thank every one of you for, t- for hanging out here and uh, just checking out all of our opinions on the professional wrestling that we watch and love. Uh, 
you can find me. Oh, I, got, I guess I should have put the banners, eh? You can find me on the X at that Canada guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that Canada dude. You can find me on Facebook at Andre Melbourne Wrestling Talk or on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at Andre Melbourne Wrestling Talk. You can always find us in audio form, A Plus Productions, on A Plus Productions on Facebook or A Plus Productions.com. Go check them out over there. The We have the uh, sports feed, the entertainment feed, and the wrestling feed. You can find me and Melbourne on the wrestling feed over there. And again, join the Facebook page. You get to chat with a lot of great people and a great community of professional wrestling fans. Uh, you can also find me and Melba over on twitch.tv slash our local establishment or, or on youtube.com slash at our local establishment. Uh, usually you can find me on Wednesdays doing Marvel Talk the same day this show comes out, but you will not find me this evening because I will be at Bowling for Soup, seeing my favorite band. Screw you, Ed. Um, I, lo- I, I, I love you, Ed. Um, but yeah, um, no, I'll be at Bowling for Soup. Ed has found a a uh, guest co-host to join him on this show so please go check that out Mar- uh, marvel talk every wednesday at eight ish mountain standard time 10 ish mountain standard time just depending on how what, what time we get started from watching the episode that comes out at seven o'clock uh so yeah so yeah go check go check that out on, on over there uh and actually one more plug Please go over to RememberTheGame.com where you can find myself this week guesting on the episode uh, talking the Resident Evil movie with my boy Adam Plank, the host of Remember the Games. Go check that out, RememberTheGame.com. You can see me there. Uh, also, one more shout-out, Mike the Rev, YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker Video. For your simulcast, all of our stuff. And he's got his Twitch channel, Twitch.tv slash Mike the Rev. For his, all his AEW watch-alongs over there. And then games the rest of the week. You find those gaming streams replayed over at youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore gaming where you can find content from him. Mr. PJC, this wee little man, this wee wee little man right there. Rick Jules, you can barely see him, but it's Rick Jules. And then uh, other frequent guests. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J here. Yes, we do. Melbourne, where can they find you? If you're wanting to follow a mobile, you can follow her on the X thing on Col- at Collins Mobile. You can find her on everything else, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Mel Ball Collins. You can also find me at our local establishment's programming, Geopardy's Wrestling Update with this guy every Friday at PM Mountain Time. Unless it's not. And then we'll let you know on social media. This week will be a pre-recorded episode because we will be at the Top Talent Show at Midway Music Hall, watching Kurt Angle do whatever it is that he's capable of doing at this point in his life. And, and the Beast you suck at him. And the Beast More Toes. More Toes. According to Ian Riccoboni. I'm toes. excited for that. I'm excited for More Toes. Um, yeah, so Friday, we will be there. So this will be a pre-recorded show. It will be coming out 8 p.m. Mountain Time. You can also find me on Astro Bazaar's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. Yes. Um, we will hopefully be having an episode coming out very, very soon as the PWI list has just been released and we got some ish we need to say about it. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, yeah, yet. stay tuned to our socials when, oh, you are... Not you might be okay with it. Um, yeah, stay tuned to our socials to find out what uh, what's going on with uh, with the app. If you're wanting to watch New Japan Wrestling, we will leave a link in the description box below. It is ngpwworld.com. It is not 999 yen. It's like more. It Andre? costs about fourteen dollars Canadian per month. So like. The flashy thing of Sean's beers. It's sort of 10. It's 10 and a half. We'll go with. Which is what, you know, Sean's beers is. Because he's a perfect 10. Yeah. Anywho. Um, yeah. It's a great price to watch some amazing professional rest. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Ah. It's a great price to watch some amazing professional wrestling. You can watch the show that we watched and talked about. Today, you can go back and watch any other show from the years of past. You can also go, if you're wanting to get a taster before you commit 
to, to purchasing NJPWWorld.com. You can see all of the NJPW World TV championship matches for free featuring Zack Sabre Jr., Jeff Cobb, even Matt Riddle. So go check that out. I'll drive. My trusted friend and colleague, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? I just want to say thank you all so very, 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 very much. Uh, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Please share us out to your friends, family, and uh, kooky little people who like to throw things at other things. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. So you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding, ding dong. Ding dong. Da ding 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 dong. Da da ding 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 dong. <laughs> and that being said, I am your Malbo. Oh, for their reason, Andre. Oh. Andre. You got to give a discretion and like thing when you're about to flash your little dick on screen. That's going to be a fun thing for the poor people in audio to listen to. <laughs> I have no idea what we're talking about. Ah, I am your Mel Ball. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Adios. Thank you.